Kayla Brace. Currently, I'm at an international conference. Last night, I got into a heated discussion with a gentleman about globalism and nationalism. So I'm going to talk about globalization. If you advocate a plan by which the people of the world are unified into a single society and functioning together, where a combination of economic, technological, socio-cultural, and political forces act separately, but in collaboration, then you are a globalist. Proponents of globalism say that free trade increases overall economic prosperity, as well as individual opportunity. Proponents claim that global cooperation enhances civil liberties and leads to a more efficient allocation of world resources. Many more say that the support of globalization is actually the support for the basic principles of democracy and capitalism. These self-proclaimed world citizens see numerous improvements in and around the world, and they say it's due to the steady increase of globalization. Increases like the abandonment of slavery practices, the extended life expectancy, uh, uh, decreased poverty, and the implementation of universal suffrage. The opponents of globalism say that free markets exploit foreign impoverished nations and ultimately seek corporate interests only. Opponents claim that globalization leads to greater levels of income disparity and are eventually creating a world that is more inhumane. These anti-globalists argue that the increasing autonomy and strength of corporate entities shape the political policies of countries in their own favor. The anti-globalization movement is usually found in either extreme nationalists, those afraid to give up sovereignty or share democracy with different cultures, or extreme socialists who fear this mega-corporation apocalypse. Either way, the fears are legitimate, but I think a little dramatic. So who's right? Well, we're all right. Globalism has created a better world, but it can be made even better if we remember the importance of equality and not the false sense of the pseudo-equality where we give everything a label and say all labels are equal, but the power of equality that's found in education, health, and opportunity for everyone. We can realistically pool all of our resources together to educate and care for everyone on the planet so long as our globalization includes opportunity and freedom of information. And I know this all sounds kind of idealistic, and, and I am an idealist, but you know, if we didn't have ideals, we wouldn't have virtues or ethics either, so I don't think ideals are that bad. The benefits of a globalized world are found in the powers of collective intelligence. As humankind becomes more and more connected with one another, in what appears to be a shrinking worldview, we can emerge from the partnership and, and the competition of every living mind. We can break down the wall set by a xenophobic paralysis that plagues the minds of those who still have yet to realize that everyone is already connected. And I don't mean connected as in a, a unified soul or, or a celestial essence but an interconnected human appeal to tenderness, goodwill, and originality. We all share that allure. We're all already connected. Now, globalization is not a perfect answer. Perfect answers don't exist, but it is a better answer, and it will provide more for more people. Globalization is equal opportunity. Unfortunately, yes, some sovereignty will be lost, and so will the we are number one mentality, but that's because the goal of a global democracy should be to act like a weak central government. That would create, you know, international dialogue on international concerns, leading more culturally relevant decisions to each nation. Hell, every nation would need only an effective national guard, no more standing armies. And optimistically, Corporations will have to fight for employees, customers, and resources on an even playing field. Meaning slave labor, child labor, that's out the door. High quality and high paid employees will eventually become the corporate asset. Competition will be fierce, and consumers will benefit. You know, besides, 
Many say that trying to avoid globalization is like trying to avoid gravity. It's happening regardless. You know, we can either sign up or feel the effects. My question to my fellow intellectuals is this. What do you think about globalism? Where do you think it's gonna be in, in our future? A great African proverb once said, when spider webs connect, they can capture a lion. Wow, that, that, you know, what a beautifully profound analogy. I think pretty much stating that anything is possible so long as we unite. I think that's what globalization is about. It's about uniting the people of Earth. We are all here on the same planet, you know, under the same roof, one family. This is Caleb Reese. What do you know?